Shadows of Brimstone is a fully cooperative dungeon crawl adventure. Everything about the adventure is dynamically generated. As you explore looking through doorways, you draw a map card to find out what the next map tile to place is. And then you place an exploration token on that room map tile. The exploration token will tell you whether it's an encounter, where it's some story moment that you use your skills to try to overcome, or if it's an attack, placing enemies onto the board and starting a fight. When the heroes are attacked, you draw a threat card from either the low, medium, or high threat deck, based on the number of heroes playing in the game. The game scales from one to six heroes. Shadows of Brimstone has been going strong since our very first Kickstarter in 2013. And with this new Kickstarter campaign, we're really excited to introduce the new chapter to the game with the impossible hell train and the lost tombs of Common Tet. The lost tombs of Common Tet lets players dive into a world of high adventure, exploring ancient tombs lost in the desert sands that are full of cursed mummies, ancient traps, and puzzles to be solved. When we started talking about making a new brimstone corset with an Egyptian theme, it seemed like a perfect match to have it set in the 1930s and go full-on pulp adventure. So getting to work with Egyptian mythology has been very interesting. The Lost Tombs of Common Tet has four different pulp adventure heroes you can play as. The Soldier of Fortune is a rough-and-tumble fighter that uses his brace of 45s to blast away at enemies. As a mercenary, he knows his weapons, and you can trick out the Soldier of Fortune to be armed to the teeth. The Archaeologist is the expedition leader, and she's the one who's actually brought all the heroes together to go on this adventure. Thanks to her digging for the truth ability, the Archaeologist finds a lot more artifacts than other heroes. The Professor is kind of like the spellcaster of the group but he uses his knowledge to trigger the different abilities on his academic expertise. When creating a professor hero, you always get occult studies as an expertise. He's a master of the occult and also gets an additional academic expertise. Using a hefty wrench and toolkit, the mechanic can clobber enemies in a fight, but she's also the best at figuring out the mechanical workings of traps. With a really high defense and hard-hitting wrench, the mechanic can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with just about anyone. With these new pulp adventure heroes exploring ancient tombs, we knew we had to add traps to the game. I think players are really going to love the new traps mechanic. It has all the excitement of a fight with enemies, but instead throws the heroes into a life-or-death race to solve a puzzle before the walls close in or the spiked ceiling crushes you. One of the most fun things about working on The Lost Tombs is getting to delve into the ancient Egyptian lore and mythology. The enemies in The Lost Tombs of Common Tet introduce a lot of new and interesting mechanics to the game. You can't make an adventure game set in 1930s Egypt without having mummies. The crypt mummies are especially dangerous. Crypt mummies are evil. With the cult of Horus, we wanted to introduce a new Egyptian-themed cult to rival the likes of the Crimson Hand. The Cult of Horus are fanatics that worship the ancient gods. They perform forbidden rituals to unleash the darkness. The biggest and baddest enemy in the box is the Tomb King. For the big XL figure in the set, we wanted to create a real monster. He's a giant Egyptian statue that's come to life, swinging his crook and flail and knocking the heroes around. One of the other new aspects of the Lost Tombs of Common Tet is the town experience. Instead of visiting a settlement or small feudal village, you actually get to go to the nearby city of Cairo in the 1930s. You can have a run-in with hired assassins in the marketplace, or get in a high-speed car chase through the back alleys of Cairo on your way to the museum. It's really cool getting to visit the much larger city between adventures. Uh, Cairo creates an entirely new dynamic about what kind of stories we can tell and what sort of locations you can visit. We first revealed the Impossible Hell Train way back in 2013 during the first Shadows of Brimstone Kickstarter campaign. We knew it was going to be a totally different type of gameplay and experience, so we set it up as a far-off stretch goal that wasn't likely to be reached within the campaign. But we wanted to tease people with the idea and sort of lay the foundation for the future. That's why it was called the Impossible Hell Train. Over the years, there's been a lot of excitement for it, and players are constantly asking us, when is the Hell Train coming? 
Well, it's time to stop the clock. The Hell Train corset comes with four new, hard-hitting Old West heroes. The bounty hunter rides the line between working for the law and being an outlaw. She gets to choose an enemy type at the start of each adventure to have as her own private bounty. Then she can use her bounty poster to make one of those enemies the leader of the group that she's looking for, getting a big payout in loot when she brings them in, dead or alive. The reporter is cunning and curious. Coming from the big city, she's looking to make a name for herself, trying to find the story of a lifetime. She's a grit machine. She gets grit just for exploring, and she's able to hand out grit to other heroes when things get dicey. The rail worker is a tank. With a really high health, great defense, and his brutal two-handed rail hammer, he can just wade into enemies, smashing them left and right. One of my favorite starting upgrades for the rail worker is the mutant crew. It lets you start the game with three mutations. And then once per fight, you can unleash your mutant fury to get bonus combat for every mutation you have. And the fastest of the heroes is the cavalry officer. He's a master of hit and run attacks. He fights with a cavalry pistol in one hand and an officer's saber in the other. He fights with a pistol in one hand, saber in the other hand, which means he gets both ranged and melee attacks every turn. It's so much fun to charge into the fray, hacking and slashing at enemies, then duck back out afterward to fire off some shots with your pistol. It's been nice getting to work on the Hell Train because we get to go back to the Old West. Over the years, we've done a lot of Old West themed enemies. So when we started working on the Hell Train, we wanted to make sure that all the enemies felt they were very intrinsically train themed. The soulless are passengers from the train that have been demonically possessed and had their souls ripped out. Now they shamble around the train cars as undead monstrosities. The train robbers are the first enemies for Shadows of Brimstone that we actually have mounted on horseback. And it's really cool to have them ride up alongside the train and get in a shootout with bandits. We wanted to have missions where the train robbers can start on horseback riding alongside the train, but then leap aboard and continue fighting on foot. We also wanted to make sure that the train robbers could dismount as they climbed on board the moving train. So the game comes with a set of train robbers on horseback, but also a set of train robbers on foot. The grotesques are like hideous gargoyles that fly down to the train and tear their way through the steel hull to get to the heroes. They are so tough, they even heal up every time a hero takes sanity damage from their horror hits. It's brutal. The engineer of the train has been corrupted by the dark power of the void. Now he's twisted and evil, and his body is fused with metal and burning coals from the engine itself. He fires a jet of boiling steam from one of his arms, and his other hand is a massive steel claw that can tear the heroes apart. In the Impossible Hell Train core set, one of the things that adds the most variety to the game are all the different missions you can play. Each mission is totally different from one another. They range from being able to fend off attacks on the train, all the way up to having a murder mystery where someone has been replaced by a mimic beast and is killing off the passengers one by one. Man, I have been waiting for the Hell Train for like 10 years. I am so stoked for this. I'm just excited to finally play the Impossible Hell Train. The Lost Tombs of Kamuntet and the Impossible Hell Train introduce so many fun new mechanics. I really think that Brimstone players are going to love it. F Fortune and Glory meets Shadows of Brimstone? I'm in. Give it to me now! Mommy Juice! These two core sets are a new chapter in Shadows of Brimstone, and with your help, we can unlock a new journey into danger. That's Train Adventure.